can't do this video for real. We can't just rock out to night tempo this whole time. What is up, pouch boys and girls from all around the world? It is your cyberspace hero Zero with another episode of this pouch dump feature. We're inside once again in the lab because it is cold outside. So, I hope you enjoy. We got a little different layout today. You know, I often struggle with trying to do too symmetrical of a layout. I've been really trying to focus on making ones that'll work from different directions or different angles and still be cool. So, that's what we got going on today. We've got, let's start with these, the Infernal Machine Company Double Dare Patches. We've got two different boos from Toxic Patch Co. One of them glows green and one of them glows blue. We've got two Gundams, I mean Dagums, from Koki Creations. This is Wing Zero and this is Heavy Arms. And two Rage Cups from Team Weekend Warrior and Lousy Values Morale Patch Company. This is the Rage Solo and this is the Saved by the Bell. In my last video, I got a comment from someone who gave me a weird compliment, but it kind of struck me the wrong way. They told me that they kind of liked seeing the same gear over and over again because it proved that I really liked it and I really used it. It struck me in a weird way because like, I purposely choose gear that I think is interesting to feature in these videos, not stuff that just you, know, you can see or get or whatever. So I, I try to do a more real loadout again with this one. Um, I did one before where I showed you where I kept the wallet in this pouch sometimes. We got a different layout this time with some gear that's maybe not as much as interesting, but usable and thematic and stuff I actually do carry once again. Um, I only feature stuff that I actually use and like. So, let's take a peek inside the pouch today. Uh, once again, I got this thing stuffed out in this loadout. So let's take a look. The old Heinz Picklesburg pin is the only pin we've got on the inside today. So let's start with the big bad boy, the elephant in the room. This is my Anchor Power Core 3 5K with a Smash Brothers Extra Life because that's like the perfect sticker to put on a battery pack, right? And then I've just got a little USB, real short USB cable that goes in the pouch with this battery. It tucks right into this back pocket back here with the cable, without the cable. Um, it's got two ports on it. It's got a, um, a full size and then a mini and it charges in one and it can charge other devices out of both simultaneously. This battery can totally refill my Pixel all the way up once and a half. It'll do a lot of other devices and stuff like that too, um, as you'll see in this video. Guess what the theme color in this video is today? Can you guess what my favorite color is too? Okay, up next. This is the OD Green Special Edition I3T EOS by Olight. This is the deep carry clipped, tail switched, 110 lumen, I think, uh, AAA flashlight that is in the OD green colorway. What's cool about this clip is like it's a super deep carry clip. It'll go way far into your pocket, but it's also double reversible. So if you like wear a hat and need to take this and put it right on the bill, you can have your flashlight hands free on the front of your hat too, in the same flashlight with the same clip. And uh, uh, I think that this is like the best feature of this flashlight, besides the fact that it's green, is this clip. I wish I could like retrofit this clip onto some of my other flashlights. Uh, up next, speaking of flashlights, uh, I have another one in here. This is the Night Court Tiki with my OEG EDC glow in the dark go speed. So if you triple tap this guy, it goes into UV mode. If you just lay the bead flat on top of it for a couple seconds and then turn it off, both the bead and and the flashlight are glowing. It's light out, so you can't tell. But, once again, I'm specifically showcasing gear that I like, that I use, so it's in the pouch. Three swords, nail clippers. Once again, gotta get those in the pouch, no matter what, they're important. Um, I should be showing off the layout a little bit more, I feel like. This is the Savivi Kiwi in Jade G10. This is a 
front flipper, double detent, teeny tiny fifth pocket knife. The JG10 version comes with this acid stonewashed blade, which is really cool. Uh, it's, like I said, it's a, a, a lockless knife. It's a double detent, which means that when you put the pressure here, the first detent, I'm trying to do it easy, the first detent stops there. So it clicks it back into place when it's done. The second detent is way up here at the top. That detent is what actually puts some pressure on the blade that it doesn't just close up automatically. You gotta actually give it some force for it to close. Now, people are always like, when I hand them this knife, like my dad was like, oh my god, a knife without a lock, what am I gonna do? And I was like, dad, what about those old slippies that you used to use back in the day? And he was like, well, that's way bigger and those locks were so hard, it took two hands to close them. And look at this little front flipper thing you got going on here. The secret to a knife like this is pressure. The jimping shows you where to put your finger. When you put pressure on the box or whatever it is that you're cutting, you're pushing down. The force of pushing is holding against the detent of the lock. It's the opposite way. So it's not going to close because you're pushing back away from it. When you push down to close it like this, this is the way that it goes back. So if you're pushing on something when you're cutting and you're pushing down to cut, there's no way that that lock can disengage. It's only when there's nothing in the way of the blade. When I'm pushing here and I'm pushing down, I can't disengage the lock unless I like really turn it. I can't even unless I put my thumb here and like force this angle to change. It's a baby kiwi. It's an amazing little teeny tiny front flipper double detent knife. And it's got such like a cool cyberpunk look to it, I feel like. I love the way the flipper tab has this little notch here, and then the scale has a cut in it. It's got an interesting back. It's a deep carry clip, even though it's really thin and there's no lanyard hole. You gotta put your bead on a clip. I don't know, so that's why I'm at with no, no bead on this guy. Um, not much else in the pouch, except for some goodies. Um, this is something that you may or may not know what it is. Don't vape, kids. It's bad for you. Also in here, you guess the theme color yet of this? A poker chip. This is just a vintage old school poker chip that I got from a pile of a bunch of different colored poker chips that I found in a box. And you know, poker chips can be really good worry coins, just like any other coin can be. They've got like a, if you get the right kind, they got like a grippy texture to them normally. They've got a little heft, a little weight. If you wanna try and do those finger moves, I'm not super good at it, but you can try and uh, you know, a worry coin doesn't have to be an expensive coin. You don't have to go and get in on a limited drop and get like a giant brass coin like this is almost exactly the same size uh, thickness wise they're almost identical this one's colder and metal and brass this one's plastic uh, you know the thing with these though is you know when you buy them or, or find them you get a set of them so like if you lose one poker chip who cares what sucks about a poker chip is you can't use them as a challenge coin unless you mark one side of them because poker chips generally are, are the same on both sides. Put him back in the pouch. On the back side. This is something I've not showed off before, but if we're going to show things that I actually carry, I feel like maybe I should pull this little thing out. This is a little flexi key ring you can get on Amazon, um, little five inch thing. It can be very malleable, but it's super strong. Uh, it's got this knurled thing on it here that keeps it from locking. Um, this is just a plain old cell phone SIM card key tool. These things are amazingly versatile. Whenever you need to reboot a router or, or any kind of hardware device that has a pinhole in them, um, other nefarious things I'm not gonna mention, great. This is a combo of two things right here. This is just a little USB-C to USB-A adapter. This one specifically is bridged for highest power and data transfer, so you can do both. This is just a straight up adapter, not a USB condom. And then this is a YubiKey. This is the new YubiKey C. Uh, you press these little buttons here on either side or both sides of them. Short press or long press does different things. This does one-time passwords. Um, OTP or MFA is a secondary 
necessary way to you know put authentication and security on your accounts so the idea with this little guy is like I plug it into my computer and it's like a fake hard drive or a, a fake keyboard so once it's plugged into your computer you type in your username you type in your password and you log in somewhere and it asks for your MFA token I just press the button on this little key and it types this super long randomized string and then the software algorithmically checks it to see if that is in fact me and here we are I'm logged in so a YubiKey these are great and they're cheap uh, I highly suggest them to anybody who's trying to up their security game. A little different, but these are some vintage playing cards. I have no idea who makes them or where they're from. Uh, I got them in a set amongst a bunch of other vintage stuff that you've been seeing recently. Um, someone in my family who recently died was a collector of playing cards, so I sadly have gotten a whole bunch of new cards for my collection in a not great way. So yeah, these, um, I'm calling them the fruits because look at the artwork that's on them. I think thematically they kind of match the setup today. So they made it into the video. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this little terrible artistry demonstration. Here's another one that's a little bit different. This is the Black Cross Leather Pew Pew. This is a little 3D printed fidget toy. Uh, this has got a bead on the back by one Justin Coke of Coke Tools. It's a little 3D printed skull, green. Board paracord, I think that this one is called uh, Silver Diamonds? I'll look it up and put it in the links in the description. Um, board Paracord, better known uh, business, small business, great paracord, awesome. Black Cross Leather Pew Pew, not much to say. Besides, uh, it's a fun fidget toy that's 3D printed out of plastic, and you don't have to feel bad about dropping it because it's not gonna break, it's not gonna scratch, it's not gonna get messed up because it's just some PLU plastic. I got mine 3D printed in gold and lime green. And I appreciate you, Sam, for sending my son one of these two in my last slip order. So thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. Black Cross Love. Well, besides what's in the pouch, we got what's in the pockets. Today, I am rocking Hank, custom made for me by my good friends Jimmy Luparello and Amanda Luparello from Damn Hanks. This is the XO Cult. It's a green and purple Hank that is covered in occult symbols, feathers, candles burning at both ends, brimstones, goats, baphomets, lunas, pentagrams, crystals, you know. Miper fiber on the back. Have you figured out what to do with the Hank yet? Do you know what these are for? Have you, have you figured out what the color scheme for today is? Uh, and also in the pocket, because I haven't been able to keep it out of my hands since I got it, this is my JRW Gear and Plague collaboration curator lanyard bead combo. We've got the curator scowl, skull with a Y on one side, brass in the aged finish, and then the JRW curator lanyard bead with the pandemic print on the back. This is just an awesome little worry totem, and I dig it so much. Well, that's it for the Pouch Dump this week. Uh, thank you so much for your time and attention. Uh, your likes and comments and subs for these videos mean the world to me, and they give me the inspiration to keep making these videos. So if you haven't subscribed, please do, and comment down below what you think the color was for the theme in this video this week. I'm so glad I didn't drop this battery pack being a jackass. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next one later.